Uh, just so you know, uh, we're a Detroit publication, so a lot of these questions kind of have a Detroit slant to them. That's all good. All right, cool. Um, let's just start off, man. Had you had any previous experiences in Detroit prior uh, to filming BMF? Yeah, um, my first ever feature film, it was called Ken, directed mm. by the Baker brothers, Josh and Jonathan. It was produced by Sean Levy in Stranger mm. Things um and the duffer brothers and uh we had uh, we was filming in toronto for a good minute of time and we had to go to detroit to get some exterior shots so we i filmed there for about like maybe a week two weeks you know what I'm saying, at a time different like broken down factories what have you you know what I'm saying, going to the going to the rural areas you know what i'm saying the rough time rough areas what have you being in the city getting exterior shots but um i was a kid at the time um now just being a grown man going back to the city um, just getting them different glimpses of the river walk and, you know, the vibes of the people and the energy. Um, I got a, I got a, a totally different perspective, you know, of, of the city and, and, and what it, and what's and what it feels to be a, a person from Detroit, you know? So I, I had fun. I had fun filming there. Um, it, it was, it was great energy. Just the people overall, um, had mad love for me. They loved the show and, um, yeah, I had fun filming there for sure. It was cold, but it was cool. It was cool. Uh oh. Am I on here by myself? No, no. Where'd he go? Oh. Do we have you back? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, one of those days. You're <laughs> fine, man. Take I'm sorry. Time. We're having a Thursday. <laughs> Yeah. Um, any, as an adult, well, as an adult on BMF or even prior, anything memorable you could share about Detroit or is there anything that sticks out from uh, your time here in, in any point in your career? Um, you guys have such a aesthetic to your city, you know, mm -hmm. like I can go to L.A., and I and I know it's LA. I can go to Atlanta. I know it's Atlanta. But the thing about Detroit is, if you're not from there, you can make it so many different types of you know what I'm saying variables. You know, and that's what I love. Yeah. That's what you know. What I'm saying like you. Yeah, go to, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. You feel me? You feel me? You guys have different parts where like it brings certain levels to the game, the entertainment game. How you want to film certain things, and that's where mm -hmm. I love. Like when you when you go to different cities, you have to suppress yourself to to certain places that you want to get exterior shots or moments in time or beats. And Detroit, it has it all, man. It has it all. You can go to one side and make it look like Atlanta. You can go to the other side. Oh no, my light went out. You can go to the other side and then and make it. I'll I'll fix my light later. Hopefully, is my light, is my light okay? It's, it's cool, man. <laughs> it was dark right now. Hold on, let me. me all right, go ahead. Take your time, man. What's up? Oh, I hate that. It's a Thursday. <laughs> it's a Thursday, man. <laughs> Golly. But um, yeah, while that charges. But uh, yeah, that's that's what I love about Detroit. You can just go to diff different parts of the city and get anything that you want out of it, you know. Yes. Even if you don't want it to be Detroit, it can look like Toronto. If you don't want it to look like Toronto, it can look like Atlanta. But if you want it to look like Detroit, it, it, it just has a real aspect to it and grimy feeling to it, you know. So that's what mm -hmm. I love. It's just so real, you know. Nice. Now, the, uh, when this season first starts off, you're in St. Cecilia Gym. You got on a classic Pelly Pelly jacket. Oh, um, I should know about the Pelly Pelly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that's classic Detroit, man. Sure. Had you, were you familiar with any of that, like, prior? Because I mean, that's like from a Detroiter, we're looking at that, like, God damn, that's that's real. That's that's how that looked at that time in Saint Cecilia. That's what we would have wore. You know what I mean? Had, I love that. You realize how that. authentic that was. <laughs> yes, I love that you say that because that was the main thing that. Me and Kia Bounds, and uh, which is the head um, costume designer and coordinator mm -hmm. um, uh, of BMF, um, we were that was the main thing we were trying to hone down on. Like, what as a Detroitian, you know, what I'm saying, what were you guys wearing? 
You feel what I'm saying? What and how can we make it as real and 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Real, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and to just to grasp the fans to where they can watch it and not question mm-hmm. what they're watching. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. You feel me? I it, that. It, it's, such, it's such a real story. So it's like, if we're going to this city, we got to go to the city wearing the type of clothes, wearing the type of hats. We got to put some Sergio's at the bottom of our feet. You feel what I'm saying? We got to wear certain track suits, you know what I'm saying? With different vibrant colors, you know? Um, and I'm glad that you said that because that was the main thing that, that we were trying to hone down on. Like when, 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 as an audience, as a fan that's from that city that we're portraying, that, that we're from, mm-hmm. what were they wearing, you know? And how can we make that person feel like that they would have wore that too? Exactly. Were you familiar with St. Cecilia at all before that? Nah, man. Sergio's, none of that, you know? So I, I, was, mean, no, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, St. Cecilia gym, where you did the, um, that first, that uh, that's where it starts off in the basketball gym. No, not at all, man. Everything was new to me. And I feel like that was just like the most fun part about it. I was learning as I was filming about the city, you know, and mm-hmm. I really don't get a chance to do that. You know, most of the time I'm playing a character that's just from from a city that I probably already know already. And we're not even trying to, you know what I'm saying, hone down on the on the actual clothes that they were wearing the lingo you know so like i was learning about the lingo the the, the style of clothing the the mannerisms all out as i was going as i was filming got you now i've seen the whole season so fast forward a bit um towards the end where you're in uh, another detroit landmark you're you're at bella park uh this is the the famous this is like where everything gets sorted out where you yeah. and me are confronting Detective Brian, saying, all right, we got a witness. If you make this move, this move, we won't make this move. Can you just unpack that scene a little bit, um, the scene, and also any uh, any aspect from filming the scene? Which scene? Which scene? The scene with, this was the scene here at LaBella Isle Park towards the end of the season, and Detective Brian is Meech, and Meech pulls out the witness saying that Detective Brian uh, is going to testify. I can't remember to what, but he's going to testify to seeing some stuff if you don't like leave uh be Mickey and everybody alone. And and what's the and what's the question again? Can you just unpack a little bit, give um some layers to the scene itself and if you have any memories of, of filming that particular scene? I'm trying to figure out what scene that was. I'm I wish you could elaborate a little bit more for me. Okay, you know what? You guys were outside. Outside okay. at the park. It's a huge fountain right behind you. Um oh. you're there, Meech pulls up, he has like a um, a witness. And he's oh, basically he's telling detective, him. yeah, he's telling detective Bryant like, hey, you know, we this guy. I remember. Gonna, yeah, that that scene. Just unpack it a little bit. Well, I will tell you, filming in the day was fucking cold. You feel what I'm saying? It was raining that day. Now that I remember it, you brought me back. It was raining that day, man. It was maybe like 30 degrees outside. Um, we did that about like 12 different takes. Uh, four to five different camera angles. Um, but um, coming back to the scene, I feel like, shoot, it was it was that it was that Mexican standoff. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? And it was more so of a understanding where Meech was coming from, but mm-hmm. uh, also an understanding the lines that Detective Bryant was willing to cross. You feel mm-hmm. me? Um, and it built up a, a lot of uh, suspension for the next season. Um, and what is and to, to figuring out figuring out what Detective Bryant's real objective is and how mm-hmm. he's going to get that done. Um, and also how Meets is going to solidify, hey, you're not going to fuck with me because this is what's going to happen, you know. Right. And that just carries on the energy onto the next season and to the third season as well, because, you know, Detective Bryant ain't going anywhere, you know. Right. Neither. You know, so uh, that was just a that was a big um, dynamic scene, a huge dynamic scene, um, not only to the first season, but for the second season, just building up those suspension blocks to figuring out where this will take us as an organization and also where it could take us as far as falling down, you know, to, you know, since the next narrative. Got you. Um, And last question, you know, I think uh, probably in the history of any character. You were under duress every episode. Man. I mean, B, B, Mickey's under, I mean, even prior season, every episode, you're under duress. 
uh, for what was it like preparing for those roles? Because you are, you need therapy, man. Be making need therapy. That's crazy. You said that, uh, my boy Bush just said that earlier, but I feel like, uh, a way of his therapy is talking mm-hmm. to himself. Okay. Um, I feel like, and me personally, um, mm-hmm. for a person to be able to handle things in their life and situations and be able to talk to other people and get other opinions, you got to mm-hmm. talk to yourself and the higher power. So mm-hmm. I'm sure you got different glimpses of last season where B. Mickey will be sitting on his couch, cleaning his gun, talking to God, you know, mm-hmm. talking. You know, mm-hmm. talking to his mother when he when she's not there, and um, those are all moments in time as a character and as a person you will be able to watch and relate and see yourself in, and be like, wow, let me take a step back and try that as well. You know, in my real time in, in my life, um, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, like it's a lot of psychological warfare that B. Mickey has been going through. Yeah, um, trying to play both sides in a way. Um, mm-hmm crossing those barriers with detective Bryant and, and keeping that secret from, um, from, uh, from Meech and Terry, you know? So mm-hmm. it, it's, it's, it's like, he's playing two different characters in one, you know? It is. So uh, therapy would be a great you know, opposition for that. <laughs> Got you. Well, brother Miles, that's all I have, man. Uh, Thank you for your that. time. Of appreciate, uh, apologize for technical difficulties, man. I like apologize, I said, man. I apologize. <laughs> Enjoy, enjoyed you on this season. Like, about, enjoy everything about it, including your performance, man. Man, I appreciate that, brother. All right, take care. You have a good weekend.